Mmm, nothing like a hot mug of chocolate on a cool fall day. That's right, we're going to be making hot chocolate mugs today with texture on them for design. Here's a few different examples of what we're going to be making, or what you can make. Um, you notice they range in size. Um, some are smaller and some are larger. It'll be up to you which size you make. You'll have some choices. They all have handles on them, and the handles go from more simple to a little more complex, depending on your design choices. They all have textural designs on them, and the textural designs will be your choice as well. They all have a rim at the top that is rounded and smooth, so when you drink your hot chocolate, you won't be cutting your lip on them. They all have bottoms on them that have been smoothed, so they're not scratchy as well as your name, and they should have the period on the bottom of them. I'd recommend adding the date as well. You'll notice that some of them kind of have a little flare in the design. This is a good example here, how it flares out at the bottom, it goes out a little bit wider at the top. And then some of them like this one are a little more straight up and down. Those will all be design choices that you'll be making. So let's go ahead and learn how to make our hot chocolate mugs. All right, so we're ready to start our mug. The things you will need is a pound and three quarters of clay. You'll need a template, which you're going to make yourself, and the template needed to be between four to six inches tall, so this way, and then 10 to 11 inches wide, which is this way. So I made my template five inches tall and 10 and a half inches wide. I'm going to set that aside. You'll also need a rubber rib and a needle tool. Let me set these aside. And then you'll also need a rolling pin and two thickness strips that are blue on the end. That they are an in, or sorry, they're a quarter of an inch wide. So we'll move all that out of the way. We need to start by wedging our clay. And so I like to stand up when I wedge, and I'm compressing the clay, getting rid of air bubbles. I'm aligning those clay particles, and I'm helping the, the clay achieve that uniform consistency. All right, so that's wedged pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that out now. So I'm rolling the clay out into the shape of this template. It's obviously not gonna be a rectangle, but I want it to be an oval that will fit that. And so when I roll this out, I don't wanna roll it out a circle. Like I'm making a bowl, I want it to be more of an oval that this template will fit. All right, so now that this is flattened out some, I'm going to start rolling my clay out. When you roll it out, you need to make sure that it's going to fit this template, so make sure it's wide enough. I think I'll roll it this way so it's wide enough. And now I need to flip the clay and roll it up and down. So roll it up and roll it down. Remember, roll it and flip it, roll it and flip it. Rather than just trying to roll it out all at once without flipping it, it's not going to stick to the canvas as much. And it'll just be a little bit better for the overall piece. Okay, so it looks like it's plenty big now. I just need to make sure it's the same thickness as these thickness strips. That looks pretty good. Once I think I'm done, I flip it one last time and roll it one more time. Okay, that's good. We'll move these aside. We'll set the template on top of there. And then I'm going to use this to help me cut a straight line. I could also use a ruler if somebody else needs the rolling pin and thickness strips right now. So I think I'll use this down here for my base if it fits. If it doesn't, then I'll roll another piece out for the base afterwards. Okay, so that works like that. I'm going to lay this right on top of there. And I'm going to cut, oh, almost skipped a step. Sorry, once you roll your clay out, you need to use the rib to compress your clay. So. You can use the rubber rib that's in the toolbox there. So I'm compressing the clay. I'm actually getting rid of some of this canvas texture, which when I first started, I thought it looked kind of cool, but now that I've done clay for a while, it just looks like canvas. It looks like someone didn't take the time to smooth out the surface of the clay. And we're gonna add lots of texture later on. Okay, so I have gone up and down and I've gone sideways. I'm going to flip the clay now and I'm going to do the same thing again. I think I'll go sideways first. 
don't know if you can see the change between the two areas. It's pretty obvious from where I'm sitting. Okay, this is an important step. Don't skip this step. All right, now to the templates. Put my template back on here. It looks like I have enough there for the bottom of the piece. So I'm going to cut up here first. So put my ruler right along the edge. I want to line that goes 45 degrees to the, I'm sorry, 90 degrees to the tabletop. And so when I cut through, I want to make sure I keep my needle tool 90 degrees to the tabletop. So it's it's at an angle this way, but I don't want it to dig in this way. So straight across. That'll hopefully do my base. All right, so that's gonna be the body of the mug. And I've got my base piece there. We'll use this to make my handle in a little while. All right, so I've got the template. I rolled out my clay, I've compressed it. I've used the needle tool to cut it out. Now what I need to do is I need to smush the two ends and I'll explain why in a minute, but the, the two ends, I need to basically make them so that they're smushed and they kind of have this nice bevel to them and what's going to happen is I'm going to put the clay into a cylinder like this and when the two ends meet up if they're the full thickness it'll be twice as thick there and I don't want that so my clay was like this I smushed this now I'm going to flip it over and smush this end okay so that one's done this one's done now I need to score, slip, and weld. So I'm going to score this end here. Score this end here. Those are the two pieces that I want to go together. And then I'm going to add some slip. I guess in addition to the other tools, I do need a scoring tool and I need some slip. But those are there for you already. So I'm only gonna add slip to one side, that'll be plenty. All right, so for this step, what I need to do, I'll turn this around so you can see, hopefully, is you are going to wrap the clay into a cylinder and then seal that up. And that would be the welding step. Now it might be slightly thicker still once I'm done. I can always smooth that out with a tool later on. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure I do is smil uh, smil up. I want to seal up the, the seam on the inside. I don't want food or actually hot chocolate or coffee or anything else to get trapped in that little seam or milk if I use it for milk. And so I want to take the time to seal that up and I'm using my fingers. Uh, you can also use any type of a tool. You could use either end but you just really want to make sure you, you make that seam so that it, it goes away, it becomes seamless on the inside. Now on the outside, you can leave the seam as part of the design or you can dissolve this, the, the seam. If you'll notice on these mugs, I can't even tell where I attached the two together. I made them seamless. And so that sealed up pretty good on the inside. I'm gonna seal up the top. And I think I'll seal the outside up too. So let me turn this around. This is the opposite way I would normally do it. I'd have it facing me, but this way you can see what I'm doing to seal it up. So 
So support it from the inside and work the clay over. When I'm working on the inside, I support it from the outside and I sealed it over the same way. Okay, and I'm not worried if that's a little rough, we'll smooth that out as we go through it. Um, we will add the texture when the clay is leather hard, so that would be another day. All right, so I'm gonna work this into a pretty decent cylinder shape. I could make it a little more rectangular, but it really, that really doesn't work so much for a mug. So I'm gonna keep it as round as possible. If I put something in here that's round, it could stick to it, so I really don't wanna wrap it around the rolling pin, anything like that. And uh, we'll just continue to tweak the shape until we get it how we want it. Once I've got the shape how I want it, the next step then is to set it on a base. And I had enough clay left, I think. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it looks like that will work. Now, if you'll notice with this mug, what I did is I made the base larger and I kind of folded it, or I didn't kind of, I folded it over. All right, as opposed to this mug where it does flare out at the bottom but it's not folded over like this one so there's a couple different designs you can do my original intent on this one was to make it look like a tree i carved the tree trunk texture and then i was going to do some leaves up here but i changed my mind or forgot or something and didn't do it that way and these were supposed to look more like roots but it's really up to you so let's go ahead and move these out of the way again what i'm going to do on this one is i'm going to go ahead and cut it just about to size maybe very slightly larger all righty so now before I attach that There's the ever important scoring and slipping. And then of course we'll weld. So I think that I'll leave this as the top. So I'm gonna to turn it upside down. This will be the bottom. So I'm gonna score that right now. And I'm scoring in a direction that follows the curve of the piece. So when I score the bottom, I'm gonna score that same direction. I score the bottom. Follow the curve around. So you'll notice that the base isn't perfectly symmetrical. Now I do have couple of wheel thrown cups. This is a cup that I threw in the wheel. I added some fancy feet to that, which really are pretty cool looking, but not necessarily the best design as far as strength. Um, this did break at one point. I glued this foot on here, but this is very symmetrical. Here's another wheel thrown piece that I got from a friend of mine, Eva. And so this is a piece that's very symmetrical as well. When you throw your pieces on the wheel, you can make them perfectly symmetrical. On these, I'm not really worried that they're perfectly symmetrical. They're really, I think the, the fact that they're not perfect is part of the handmade quality of them and part of the design. I, I'm not looking for a perfect cylinder on these. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm lazy and I do a lousy job just saying, well, that's part of the design, I, I made it that way. No, it, you know, do your best, but it doesn't have to be perfectly cylindrical or like a perfect uh, circle shape for it to work as far as the design goes. So anyways, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and add some slip now to the rim and hopefully that's all showing up good in the video. All right, so dab some of that along here. I'd rather have a little bit too much slip than not enough. Now that doesn't mean I dump a whole load on there and make a big mess because that's not good for my mug either. All right, so what I'm going to do now is turn this over and put it on my piece right there. Now I'm going to work it back and forth a little bit. This is part of the welding process. I'm trying to get it into that circle shape. Now I've got it. I'm going to tap it gently in there. Just tap and turn. It's part of the welding process. And then we'll, uh, we'll make sure it's real sealed up here in a minute. For the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger. Actually, a tool might work better. I'm going to take a tool 
and go up around the edges. Now since I want you to see this, I'll keep turning it as I go. Now inside, I'll want to make sure that I take the time to seal that up as well. I don't want any hot chocolate or milk or anything else like that getting caught up in that seam on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the inside. I'm going to work on the outside a little bit more right now. So as I'm going through, it should begin holding its shape better now that it has a bottom on it, but I'm going to keep sealing this up until I get that sealed how I want it. Okay, now another thing with these that I, that I like is I have the edges, so it's got just a little bit of um, upward curve to the outer edge of the mugs. Here's another example. You can see how it's dented in on the bottom and it's very slightly curved out here. And we'll dent these in on the bottom when we're done. And then we'll, we're gonna go ahead and make this nice curve right now. So what I'm gonna do with my mug is I'm gonna take it and just kind of gently rock it. This helps weld it a little bit better and it kind of just helps with that curve shape. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you one other thing that you can do if you like. You could make your mug thinner in areas. You could make it more like an hourglass shape by curving the insides in and bringing the outsides out. Now, you can do that by physically maneuvering the clay with your hands, and that's what I did on these when I worked with them. But you can also do what's called a dart. And so I'll just show you one dart. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll do it kind of along the middle here. And actually, I might do it right here where the seam is. So the way you do a dart, and this is not just for mugs, it's a term that refers, actually, thinking about sewing, um, my mom did a lot of sewing when I was growing up, and she would do darts in, on her dresses and shirts and different things she would sew. But what you're going to do is you're going to cut a groove or a line, and then you're going to take a slight bit of clay out, and then when you seal the clay up, it causes the clay to go inward. So let me turn this for a minute so I can see it, and I'll show you here what I did. Okay, so I drew a line through the middle, and then just kind of created an oval. It comes to a point on each end. It shaped, looks a little bit like a leaf. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to support it from the inside, and I'm going to take my needle tool. You can also use a fettling knife for this potter's knife, or an X-Acto knife. And I'm going to cut the shape out. So what I would need to do now is score and slip and seal it up. This is a little bit more advanced than just the basic mug. You may decide you want to try this, and by all means, you do not need to. But I do want you to see some different options. So I'm going to seal that up now by working the clay together. And I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see how it really kind of gave it that curve. Now I could do multiple darts. I could do four of them. I could do two of them, or I could just leave one. And I'll see how this looks, and I'll decide if I want to do any more or not. But I really need to make sure I seal it up. So let me work the clay on the inside. And then I'm going to work the clay on the outside to seal that seam. Actually, kind of like that with maybe my handle right there, so I might leave just one dart. 
Yeah, I think I'll leave that. I think I like it just like that. I won't do any more darts on it, but you could do another one on the other side, get it to curve in there. You could actually make a mug that looks like a human torso. I think you could easily see how that would work. So just let me make sure this is nice and sealed up one more time. So that seam will be weak for a while. I'll need to make sure that I baby that along. Once the clay gets leather hard, it'll be a little bit better, but it's something that you've got to keep your eye on as you're working on it. Don't put too much stress on that seam. Okay, so at this point, um, I'm ready to make my handle. And so I have some extra clay here. There are multiple ways of making handles, and I'll show you a couple of different things. So I'm going to move this just up to the corner out of the way right there. So I need to start by re-wedging my clay. Now if my clay is too dry, I can use the spray bottle and I can poke a hole in it. And squirt some water inside, seal it up and try to get that water to work in. But my clay is pretty good, so I don't think I need to do that, even though I just did. All right, so I'm going to wedge that back up. All right, so for a handle, there were lots of options. Basically, this is a, a nice, easy one to do here. This is a coil of clay that I rolled out. I flattened it out, and I, 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 I made the shape out of it. On this mug... Here, I pulled the handle and it's kind of a unique shape, but um, I think I'll show you how to pull a handle if you want to try doing that. And the rest of these were rolled out coils too, I think. Yeah, these were all rolled out coils of clay, which is probably the easiest way when you're learning to make a mug handle. There are other ways, but I'll show you how to do this one first. So I only need about that much clay. And I'm gonna, even though I wedged it, I'm just going to make sure there's no big grooves or creases in it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now with this piece of clay is I'm going to roll it out into a coil. So just roll the clay like this. I'm trying to get it round. And then the trick with rolling a coil, I know there's probably lots of tricks, but one of the tricks is you need to kind of, as you're rolling, let your fingers begin to spread out. And what that does is it helps the clay move in a fashion that allows it to get thinner and spread out. I don't think my fingers are really causing it to spread out. They just allow the clay to do what it needs to do. So you notice how it's getting longer. As it gets longer, obviously, it's going to get thinner through here. Now, this is too big, thick of a piece for a handle, so I do need to make that thinner. And already I have a lot more clay than I need or a lot more handle than I need, but. That's kind of irrelevant to the point. Okay, so I have a nice coil there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, I'm going to spray it to get it damp and slippery. And I'm going to begin flattening it a little bit by going back and forth on it like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. There's no reason to use a rolling pin on this because you're not trying to make it super flat, you're just trying to create a nice curved surface to it. So I like how both sides are. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna put a little thumb groove down the middle. So I'm gonna get that nice and wet again, or actually finger groove. And I'm gonna just take like this to create a little groove in the middle. I haven't decided which part of the coil I'm gonna use yet, but this end or this end or the middle. So I'm keeping it consistent all the way up and down. And I'm taking my finger or my thumb to get a little bit deeper groove in there. Okay, I'm going to turn it over, check the back side. It's a little bit flat, so I'm going to curve that a little bit more. If you need to, get it wet. I'm getting rid of the canvas texture that got in there too. Okay, and check this side one more time. Looks good, okay. So my handle, if you'll notice, these handles, they're really not super big. You've got to decide, do you want two finger handle, a one finger handle? This one here is good for two. This one is, is good for one. Now this mug here that Eva made me 
has it's good for one and it's way down at the bottom so the placement of where the handle goes the shape that it goes those things are all important also if you'll notice the the mug handle curves in this way this is a better design than this because it makes it a little bit stronger but this one here has a piece over the top that is a place for my thumb to sit so this one has the same idea right there without that extra piece at the top. So you have to decide on a lot of different things on what you want to do. This mug here, got a lot going on here, I'll move this one, has that handle going down at the top like this one, and it doesn't have the thumb piece on the top. So you decide how you want that to go. But what I'm going to do for mine is I'm going to, I'm going to put a little thumb piece at the top, but I'm also going to have the handle curve down a little bit more. So. That being said, what I'm going to do is curve, let's cut this end off here, and this is going to be the little thumb piece that goes down like this. Nope, didn't make it big enough, so let me make that a little bit larger. I'll cut the extra off if I have extra. And then so this mug handle here, oops, that's still real soft. So this is going to go here and that'll come down and then this is going to curve around so I'm thinking that it's going to go about like so I like it I like it okay so what I'm going to do now is score right here and score right there and I'll do the bottom part in a minute but I'm going to attach the top first so what happens if I don't attach my handle well? Well, at some point my handle might fall off, probably before it's fired is my guess, and that would not be an efficient design. Yeah, I like that. I think this curve matches this curve in a nice way. I like the way it curves up and inside. I don't think I've done a handle like that before, so this is kind of a unique shape. So the top is attached on there decently. And I've also got to keep in mind, I did create that dart in the middle there, so I want to keep that nice and straight. Also, I am notorious for making my handles crooked. If you'll notice this one here, the handle is very crooked. So that detracts from the design a little bit. So as I'm working on this, somebody told me you can get your handle right and then take a tool and make a mark where you're going to attach it that way, which is what I just did. So I'm gonna just score this. I'm gonna score under here, and I'm gonna add some slip in there, and then attach that on. So I do need to change the angle here so I can work on this. I'll lay it like that. So I'm gonna seal this up. I can see that dart in the middle there. I may need to add a little bit of clay to that, possibly. Okay, and as this becomes firmer, I can work on the shape a little bit more, but I definitely want everything attached well now. So I'm gonna bring this down. If you were to ask me to describe this shape, or the, the style of this shape, I would say whimsical. Okay, I'm going to really work that on there better. And then where this comes in here, I'm just going to really attach that better too. So let me turn this here and work that in down there. Gives me a little more clay for that dart to help seal that up as well. Okay. Well, now I'm looking at that. That's a pretty big handle. <laughs> a little bit bigger than I wanted. I think I'm going to cut that off and fix it. What I'm doing is I'm just going to move the handle up more and leave the circular shape. 
I'll have to repair where I took it off. All right, so I said I'd show you a couple more methods for making a handle besides the uh, rolling it out as a coil and then flattening it. So the next way is to pull a handle. And so to do that, once I've wedged my clay and that's already been done, I'm gonna roll the clay out kind of into a shape of a carrot for the most part. And then what I'm gonna do is I need to use a spray bottle and I need to get the clay real wet on the bottom half. And then what happens is because it's real slippery, you slide your hands on the clay Hopefully that's showing up. And then as it gets slick, uh, sticky, you need to spray it again. But the slipperiness allows you to slide your hands on the clay and begin pulling down on it gently. Once again, your clay needs to be well wedged. I would do this with fresh clay or clay that's been nicely moistened. And then this allows you to make it into that nice tapered shape. And I'm putting a groove here for my thumb to make a handle. All right, so I don't have a mug to use for this. So I'll just show you on this one. So what I would do is I would cut the extra clay off. It's my needle tool. I'm going to just get rid of that extra clay there and I'm going to cut the clay off there. And then what would happen is where I attach the clay. Oops, I want to attach it this way here. Okay, so score, you know, score that piece, and then this would go on here like this. And I would work that piece in with my thumb, and then the other end would come down kind of like this here. Once again, score it, and then you could curl this end around, you can cut the extra off. But that's pulling a handle. That looks pretty easy, it looks pretty good, but it does take a little bit of practice. So that's a second way to make a handle, pulling a handle. And then the third way would be to roll out your clay using the thickness strips, just like you did when you made the mug. So, so those blue thickness strips, it'll make a really thin handle, and I think it's a little bit thin for these mugs. Might work, but I'd rather not chance it. So I'm just gonna roll that out so it's more like that there. Okay, so the reason I had you um, do the thickness of these is so you, you can kind of squish it a little bit. So I like that width right there. So I'm gonna take the needle tool. And then what would happen is, if you do this, do not leave these sharp corners. It looks terrible. It looks like you rolled out a piece of clay and you cut it and that's what you did. And I see people attach things like this and I just think that is not what you're supposed to be doing. It'll look kind of ugly. So what you want to do is take that and just like you did with your coil, is you were going to round the edges. Well, actually on the coil you flatten the middle, but on these you're going to round the edges. And it is a little thicker, so you can flatten it out a little bit. You don't need to use a rib to compress it because you can use your fingers. I'm gonna make a groove down the middle for my finger, or with my finger, that is. Get rid of the canvas texture. All right, so once again, I would score. You can use a scoring tool, the needle tool works too and then score your mug, attach your handle like that, and then attach the other end like this, and then with the extra, you can leave it down, you can cut it off, you can wrap it around like we did on the other one, it's really up to you. So if you notice the difference between this one here where it gets more tapered at the bottom, this one is the same thickness all the way through, 
I don't like that quite as much. It's not as comfortable in your hand, but it's not bad. It's, it's a decent handle. And then this one here was a coil that I flattened out, and that's just narrower. It feels pretty good in the hand. This one feels great. This one is fine too, nothing wrong with that at all. And you could actually press right here with your thumb, so you make a little groove for your thumb if you wanted. But that's a couple of other ways of making handles. Now nobody really likes starting over, but worst case scenario, if this doesn't work out, I could always start it again. But I don't think I'll need to. All right, looks pretty good. So I'm gonna put a little bit better thumb spot on that. Flatter there. All right, so we'll work on that once it sets up a little bit more. So these are the main steps that you wanna to try to accomplish on the first day of making your mug. So get your slab of clay, roll it out. Of course, you need your template. You're gonna make that. You're gonna cut out your template, make it into a cylinder. Um, smoosh the ends, obviously, before you attach it together. Once you get your cylinder, put it on a piece of clay, cut out the base, tap to the base, uh, tap it to the base once you slipped and scored, really work it in. And then um, also there's a few other things to do, but we'll do those once the clay sets up and gets a little bit more leather hard.